Hello and welcome to Americans Learn. My name is Lauren and today we are going to look at the fat electrician once again. This is going to be his video, The Biggest Logistical Flex of All Time. Uh, it's about the Berlin air uh, airlift and we're apparently going to learn in this video the reason why communism sucks. I mean, we already know that it doesn't work, but let's find out more specific reasons why. Uh, just a quick shout out to member Joe Fravel. Thank you so very much for being a channel member. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Let's go. Ah, uh, yes, that time the communists tried to starve an entire city. So America and the UK teamed up to deliver 4.6 billion pounds of food and supplies to that city using nothing but cargo planes. <laughs> Today we're talking about the biggest economic and logistical flex of all time, America's Operation Vittles and the UK's Operation Plainfield coming together to be known as the Berlin Airlift. But first a word from our sponsor, this video is brought to you by Henson's Shaving. Okay, here's the deal, Henson's is a family- I think he was using the Airbud font for that. Isn't that the Airbud font? I don't know, maybe I'm nuts. UK's Operation Plainfield like coming together to be known as the Berlin Airlift. But first, a word from our sponsor. This video is brought to you by Henson's Shaving. Okay, here's the deal. Henson's is a family-owned machine shop that makes parts for the aerospace industry. There's literally parts on the Mars rover that these guys made, and one day they woke up and they're like, hey, we're just gonna make the most precise safety razor on the market. And this is it. This is all they sell. It comes in aluminum or titanium. If you wanna pay extra, it comes with a little stand. And then they also sell the razor blades so you have a one-stop shop, not because they're razor blades are proprietary because this thing will take any shaving razor blade on the market. You oh, don't have to wow. buy their proprietary cartridge. You don't have to sign up for their monthly delivery thing. No, you buy this one time and then you can put any five cent razor in it and shave for the rest of your life. So the product itself is fantastic, but more importantly, the company is awesome because every time a YouTuber does an ad like this, they get sent a little media packet full of talking points, what to say, what not to say, and so on. Now, I'm not supposed to disclose this, but the brief that I got for Henson's basically said there is no script, do whatever you want, we trust you. Also, in the first paragraph, they said this, quote, if for whatever reason you don't get a good shave with our product, please let us know. If we can't help you, then don't endorse us. We think we've made one of the very best razors in the world. If you disagree, we'd rather not ask you for a non-genuine endorsement. So not only are the razors great, but this is the type of company you want to support. I'll have a link and a discount code down below. Okay. Let's get back to the video. All right, important background That's info. Awesome. After World War II, the Allied forces took control of Germany and it was split into pretty much four different chunks. The Soviets got a piece, America got a piece, the French and the British both got a piece. Here's a map of that right here okay here's where it gets a little weird berlin was also split into four equal chunks the problem with that was berlin was a hundred miles into the soviet territory so you have this little tiny speck on the map of british french and american territory completely surrounded by the ussr while that is oh, weird good. it wasn't really a problem because right after world war ii everybody was still an ally so america the british and the french had no problems using the roadways and the trains to get food and supplies to their section of berlin now just so we're on the same page berlin and essentially all of germany to a slightly lesser extent is essentially a third world country at this point in time. Berlin in particular has essentially been turned into rubble from allied bombings. The entire German economy is in the toilet and all of the German people are not getting a lot of sympathy from the global community because well, they kind of started it. Now with the allied forces in control of Germany, it is their job and their responsibility to help take care of the German people. Now, I will the Western say, powers- I will say that it does, it always kind of sucks when the citizens of a country are blamed for all of the things that their government or their military did. It's like, just be like, and even sometimes it's like, well, you know, they, they voted them in or something, but it's like, but you know, it, that, that means shockingly little. I feel like a lot of the time it's like, you, yeah, you voted for people in, but then do they actually listen to you after you voted them in? Or like, I don't know. I feel like it just, it, it feels wrong to just blame all of the people of a country for the thing that their government is doing. It's like a lot, there's probably quite a few people there that did not agree. And you know, there's nothing that they could have done about it though. There are very, very little like, and anyway, anyway, I, and I feel like that is applicable to things forever and always Still, don't, be, don't be like, yeah, the citizens of this country should suffer because their uh, government is full of evil people. Like, no, punish 
the evil people in the government, but like don't make everybody suffer because of the government being evil. America, anyway. Great Britain, and France, they're all on the same page. They all have the same game plan. They want to go in, render aid in the short term to the German people, then in the long term, okay. help prop up their economy, get them back on their own feet, and then they can leave. The USSR, on the other hand, aka Good the communists, absolutely hate that idea. The last thing a bunch of communists want is people being able to take care of themselves. So they step in and they're like, no, absolutely not. We're going to build a communist utopia out of this place. So in order to stop the Western powers from helping Germany, they decide that they're going to print billions and billions of Reichsmarks, the German currency. They devalue the currency so there's so much money that it's no longer a store of value to the point that it literally takes a wheelbarrow full of money to buy a loaf of bread. Because of this, the already struggling German economy completely collapses and a black market sets in and the new currency for Germany is essentially cigarettes and food. And this goes on for like two years with the West trying Yikes. to negotiate with the USSR on how to proceed. And during that time, the people of Berlin I did not realize it was that bad. I knew it was bad. I'd, I'd heard of the Berlin airlift before. Um, I feel like I'd I mean, even heard it rhetorically said that you needed a wheelbarrow of money to buy a loaf of bread. But he said literally here. So that is really troubling. And I didn't realize like for two, it, like how long it went on before things started to actually happen. And are quite literally starving and freezing to death with the average Berliner eating less than a thousand calories a day. Eventually, the West steps in and they're like, fuck it, we're just going to do it without the communists because we have to help these people. So they create a new type of currency for Germany known as the Deutschmark and it's going to be seen as a real store of value and help rebuild the German economy. The Soviets find out about this and they freak out, basically break all diplomatic communication with the Western powers, and they officially want to break up and just have East versus West, capitalism versus communism, Hungary versus Fed. This is where the Cold War really starts kicking off. And the first ideological okay. battleground of the Cold War is going to be Berlin, because remember, it's 100 miles into Soviet territory and a big chunk of it is still controlled by the Western powers. So the Soviets decide they need to take over that part of Berlin too. They can't have a little speck of capital in their communist utopia. Now, luckily for the communists, it's an easy fix. They really don't have to do anything because the minute the West Berliners see what a communist utopia really looks like, they're going to willfully and freely denounce capitalism and run over and become communist too, mm. right? Wrong. That's <laughs> never going to happen because communism sucks. It's always sucked and it's always going to suck. So yep. the communists are going to do what they always do. They are going to basically present West Berlin the option join or we will attempt to kill you because if you don't know that's the dirty little secret to communism they always talk about seizing the means of production what they never bother to tell you is that people are also part of that means of production and they will seize you too so that's exactly what they do they attempt to seize yep. west berlin they blockade it off from the western powers they cut off every road every railway and the thing that they do too is like they make it sound good like everybody will be equal everyone will have enough because nobody's at the sitting at the top with all of the the berries and now like because everybody has an equal number of berries so everyone's gonna be happy and fine but there's always people still at the top and it's never there's never enough there's never enough in every waterway so that the western powers cannot get west berlin food or any other supplies and then they cut off the power to that section of the city quite literally freezing and starving them to death until they comply so obviously this is a diplomatic and humanitarian disaster all the military leadership runs over to president truman and they're like hey what do you want us to do basically we got three options option a we can start rolling tanks in and kick off world war three right now option four b heads on four heads. we can just leave the berlin people there to die and option c we can try to fly in as much food and supplies as possible but getting enough to feed an entire city is basically going to be impossible what do you want to do now obviously i'm paraphrasing a little bit truman basically said we're america America, we don't start world wars we just finish them also and i quote we stay in berlin period which narrows it down to one single option they are going to fly okay. in enough food and enough supplies to try to feed all of west berlin here's the cat we just start littler wars and don't finish those catch with that the american leadership has absolutely no idea what that's going to take or how to even proceed so they go to the british government who has just spent the last decade rationing their own people and they have a great understanding of what it takes to keep a large population of people mm. fed and warm so great britain communication the numbers and they figure to get every so single important. person in west berlin 1700 calories a day it's going to be 1500 tons of food every single day in addition to that since the power got cut off 
off, they're going to need 2,500 tons of coal and fuel every single day. Okay, 4,000 tons, just so we're all on the same page, that is 8 million pounds of supplies That's every what? single day just to keep everyone alive. And the best cargo plane they have to work with at this point in time is the C-47 Skytrain, which has a maximum capacity of three tons, meaning that they are gonna have to land 1,333 cargo planes into Berlin every single day. To put that- Just imagine the amount of fuel that would take too. That would like, so like that many planes for however long, cause it's, it's a question mark right now about how long this is even gonna take. It's going to be uh, pricey. That into perspective, there's only 1,440 minutes in a day, meaning that one plane has to land every minute and eight seconds. This is impossible. That's this not going to work. The formed United when... States Air Force says, hold my nuclear bombs and watch this shit, because on June 26, 1948, two days after the Soviet blockade, they launch Operation Vittles, where they are going to try to feed an entire city via cargo plane. Two days after that, June 28th, the UK says, hey, we're gonna help too, and the RAF launches Operation Plane Fair, and together this becomes known as the Berlin Airlift. I just, I was thinking Plane Fair, like, I don't even know what I was, I don't even was, I don't even imagine how I was spelling it in my head. It was like Plane Fair, like boring food, I think, like P-L-A-I-N-F-A-R-E. Um, which I thought was just a silly, because Americans like Project Vitals, <laughs> you know, like that's, it's just silly. Um, and then you got plane fare. It's like, yeah, it's going to be absolutely deadly dull, darling. And then, but then I was thinking, oh, wait, but it also could be plane fare, like P-L-A-N-E fare, because it's coming from a plane. And I'm like, leave it to the Brits to have like two puns in their project name and the americans are just like i don't know food <laughs> and right out of the gate it is a complete and utter shit show they're trying to fly in planes from absolutely everywhere it is disorganized chaos there's planes crashing there's mid-air collisions it's a complete disaster and on their best day they're maybe able to get a thousand tons of supplies less than a fifth of what they need now at this point the conditions in berlin are getting worse and worse by the day the communists are essentially laughing at the stupid capitalist pigs at which point america calls up one of its main characters a man by the name of general <laughs> william tunner tunner Okay, well, they were like, main characters. I'm like, I've never heard of this man. I went through a World War II phase when I was like 10, but that means that I heard of like Patton and Eisenhower, you know, and Truman and FDR. That's who I heard of on the American side. <laughs> All right, this is a guy that coordinated all the logistics of getting supplies into China during World War II when they had to fly over the Himalayas. If anybody can unfuck this situation, it's going to be him. And that's exactly what he does. So General Tunner comes in and he's like, here's the deal. We're going to fly these planes like we're conducting an orchestra. There's three air channels to Berlin. The two on the outside are going to be planes going to Berlin. And the one in the middle is going to be planes leaving Berlin. For the two air channels going into Berlin, we're going to launch one plane every three Three minutes all day every single day and those wow. planes are going to fly at five separate altitudes staggering every single time to give them just enough time to land the germans on the receiving end of this are like we're literally starving to death we got to help out the americans and the british with this so they show up and they start unloading the cargo planes for them and they get so good at unloading these planes that they can unload all three tons of cargo in under seven minutes and help get the planes turned around and sent back out and this turns into one wow. of the beautiful humanitarian team effort moments in human history. There's American and British pilots, air crew members, mechanics, all just showing up in West Germany without even being called to help with this effort and to fly and repair these planes to keep that them going nice. around the clock. And then over in Berlin, the same Amazing. thing is happening. There's Luftwaffe airplane mechanics showing up to help repair the American and British cargo planes to keep everything running. The two sides that were fighting against each other just a few years ago are now working together to save people. Everybody involved in this operation gets so good at what they're doing that the choke point that's holding up even more progress is that they don't have enough airfields 
to land the planes on. So the Germans straight up build another one. The only problem with that was there was this big ass apartment building in the way. And when the pilots lowered their landing gear, their landing gear would only clear that apartment roof by like 20 feet, which seems like it would be kind of terrifying so the germans are like hey do you want us to rip that apartment building down what do you guys want us to do and the american and raf pilots are like bro we just got done flying in world war ii with you guys and the japanese shooting at us the apartment's gonna be fine trust me and sure <laughs> we enough, got they this. start not only hitting but exceeding the quota of 4500 tons a day and this wow. infuriates the soviets this is the biggest economic and logistical flex of all time it shouldn't even be possible and yet america the uk and the people of west berlin are somehow pulling it off so it is stories like this though that like do give me some kind of hope for, for humanity as a whole, like just the people involved, like sometimes we don't suck that bad. I mean, the communist government does, they, they're terrible, obviously, uh, but it's like, hey, look. And so it's, and it is nice to see, it's like, cause he said earlier in the video that like the world at large kind of saw Germans as, you know, evil villains but that didn't stop you know these folks from helping out and and then you know they, they proved that they were decent Ugh, it's just nice it's nice to see collaboration you know people saving each other's lives even though they were enemies just less than a decade ago i just like to see it at this point the soviets decide they have to try to do something to stop this so they start of course sending they up all their fighter planes to try to mess with all the american and british cargo pilots by flying too close they're basically trying to mess up air traffic cause accidents do anything they can to slow down this logistical miracle however it doesn't really work why because the american and british pilots know that it's basically a bluff because it's essentially <laughs> a giant game of fuck around and find out <laughs> yeah it is if the soviets actually do anything it's going to kick off war, war three and at this point point in time america is the only country on the planet that has nuclear bombs and a president that's not afraid to use them okay if you're not picking up what i'm putting down i'm trying to tell you <laughs> that the american and raf pilots are flying with the confidence of knowing that if one of these soviets shoots them down president truman is going to bitch slap their entire country with the sun needless yep. to Oh, it's just like it just I just have this image in my head of like the Soviet planes going close to the, you know, plane chicken and the American and British pilots going nee, nee, nee. try it, bitch. <laughs> like that's like, like wh that is what it is. It's like you can't bluff someone if you are if you are not going to be able to back it up like y that doesn't work. It It's annoying and it's probably going to shake things up for a little bit until they like figure out how to get around your annoyance factor, but like, he's not gonna, like they know you're not gonna do anything. They know this and you know they know. So what's, what's the point? Also, it's just like, let's make it so these people have to starve. To, let's like purposefully starve these people to death, which is always evil. Always, every single time. If you are the people who are like, let's starve this community until they capitulate, you're the bad guy every single time to say they were unfazed by the soviet harassment how unfazed were they thank you so much for asking q on <laughs> <X> main <laughs> character gail halverson aka the candy bomber he was one of the mini pilots that was flying supplies into Berlin and somewhere along the way he decided that he was going to start dropping candy bars with little handkerchief parachutes Aww. out of the window of his plane over West Berlin so that the kids could get some candy. And eventually Adorable. this went on and all the kids were waiting where the planes would fly over hoping that they would get a candy bar. Then the American government caught on and they're like, oh shit, this is a great propaganda opportunity. Yeah, Imagine it is. Imagine what it would be like if every single plane was dropping candy out of it. So that's exactly what they do. They start dropping a bunch of candy out of every plane and then they make propaganda out of it but then it gets bigger because all the american candy companies start sponsoring it and donating even more candy to drop and then it gets bigger because I mean... all the kids in america and the uk start raising money at school to buy candy to give to the kids of oh, germany and... that is really sweet i will say like that something it, it people like children will sometimes surprise you with that kind of capacity for kindness because a lot of the times you would think oh ah, well where's mine you know but i will say there was one time we went trick-or-treating one of the last years i was going to go and 
uh, I had this, you know, I had this giant, huge pillowcase full of candy because we'd been going for two miles at that point. Um, and then a couple of teenagers, you know, stole it from me. They like ran up. I saw them like a block behind. Uh, I didn't think anything of it, but then they ran up, stole my candy and like took off. And I was wearing like a big costume and couldn't chase them, which I did try to do. And then I was like sobbing because it was like and like two miles of and and five pounds of candy were just gone. Um, but then the two friends I was with, I got back to their house and they both like shared half of their load with me. Like both of them ha like gave me half. So now they each had half of what I had. And then like kids from my dad, like my dad told uh, one of his coworkers, and she told her family that, you know, her coworker's kid got their candy stolen, and they gave me candy, too. They, like, filled up little bags of candy for me. I was just, like, not expecting it. And I was like, look, I'm not even in this <laughs> for the candy, really, because um, it takes me months to eat I don't at all in general because I don't have a huge sweet tooth but I was just like it was like one of the sweetest things that has ever happened to me personally and so I kind of love this that they would band together just to get candy for the the kids across the, the ocean that's adorable and it's way better than what we used to do because when I was in uh, elementary school, middle school, whenever disasters would happen, um, the school would raise money from the kids, you know. Uh, but it was always like you have to put money in a certain teacher's little bucket and each teacher had a thing that they promised they would do if uh, if they won the most money. So like one year, one teacher, one sixth grade English teacher was like, if I ran the most money, I'll, sh I'll let the kids shave my head. And she did, because of course she did. I mean, we always raised a lot of money for it, but it was also like, we needed a prize. And they're giving out even more candy. And the Soviets have to stand there and watch as the Americans and the British are not only flying in a literal Costco worth of shit into West Berlin every single day, every but they're day, dropping which is candy nuts. out of their planes like it's a fucking parade the entire time. And this it really is more of a neener neener move. And East Berlin is eating potatoes and standing in bread lines, and it makes the Soviets look like the biggest assholes on the planet. Because not yeah. only are the people of East Germany watching the Western world essentially move heaven and earth to help out West Berlin. In, they're also watching the Soviets be more interested in disrupting America and the UK from helping people than they are in helping the people of East Germany. In short, America and the UK are playing to win and the Soviets are playing to not lose and it is leading to a lower quality of life for all of East Germany. As it turns out, Sun Tzu was yet again correct when he said the sun may rise in the east, but it sets in the west, and that's because west side is the best side. That's not what it means. Really? Not even close. <laughs> I like that. That might have been Ice Cube, actually. <laughs> Anyways, so now in retaliation for all this, America and the UK, I like that pretty cut much out. the entire Western world, are going to put a bunch of embargoes on the Soviet Union and punish them financially and economically. Now, the Soviets absolutely cannot afford this, but they keep telling themselves, it's okay, winter is coming, and as soon as winter gets here, they're not going to be able to land all these planes, and this whole thing is going to fall apart. We just have to wait out long enough for winter to slow down America and the UK. So that's what they do. They just try to shoulder the financial burden and wait for winter to come and put a stop to this entire thing. Winter comes and winter, it does slow down some of the flights, but here's the catch. America was also developing bigger, better cargo planes. And now America <laughs> isn't just flying the C-47, America's flying their new cargo plane, the C-74 Globemaster. <laughs> and as opposed to the previous C-47 carrying only three tons, the Globemaster can carry 25. So despite the fact that weather Dang. can sometimes delay. I love it when you see people looking to the future. Also, it's like, also it, it is kind of depressing <laughs> that they're like, yeah, these guys are gonna just keep screwing with us and screwing with us. And I bet they're just waiting for winter to make us look bad. So we're gonna make something better. <laughs> like. You know, they say necessity of the, is the mother of invention. I do think sometimes it's spite. 
They flights America and the UK continue to improve and increase the amount of supplies that they are delivering daily. And by Easter Sunday, 1949, they would break their own record, landing 1,383 planes in a single day, delivering 13,000 tons of supplies, which is 26 million pounds, which obviously oh is like 11.8 million kilograms or roughly 87 blue whales. Yeah, there it the is. United States Air Force and the RAF shipped 87 blue whales worth of crap into West Berlin in a single day. And because of this, it becomes very apparent Bonkers. to the Soviet Union that America can and will keep this shit up forever if they have to. And they are finally forced to give up the blockade because they cannot shoulder the financial burden anymore. And that would come down on May 12th, 1949. And with the roads and railways to West Berlin finally open once again, the Berlin airlift would come Come to an end after 15 months, 277,000 flights spanning 92,000 miles and delivering 2.3 million tons of aid, which is roughly 4.6 billion pounds or 15,333.333. All the blue whales. I'm not counting all these whales. The greatest logistical Fair. and humanitarian feat ever accomplished. Wow. And the Western world Sounds did like it, it with communism doing everything it could to slow it down. So in conclusion, fuck communism. The best way to support oh, the I channel is go now. buy some merch at thefatelectrician.com. Quack bang out. Not going to lie. I did think that the little stick figure was trying to pull the C away. And I'm like, why is why is he trying to make the shirt say communism? <laughs> Good job, me. I am paying all the attention. This is fucking common. And then the Soviet Union got all pissy and built a wall through the middle of Germany. And that's what we're going to talk about next week. Woo! Okay. Good to know that that is what we'll talk about next week. All right. I mean, he's always fun. I feel like I learn so much when I'm listening to the fat electrician. I really do. And again, I'm glad we got to hear about something that's kind of not. I mean, like everything surrounding the event sucks because the Russian government was awful and like was thriving on being awful. But like it is nice to hear stories about Amer like the world coming together for once instead of tearing itself to little pieces. And I feel like that's the kind of thing we need to hear more about. Um, and we need to do more of, you know, it's just like, can we just, can we all just get along? I know we can't, but I mean, we can, obviously though. We, we, it's doable. Anyway, anyway, I know I went off on a bunch of tangents there, so apologies for that. I hope you enjoyed some of them. Anyway, I will see you all in the next video.